This month we've been speaking about how much God wants us to try even though things seem very negative. I mean, there's been a lot of conversation about losses, about constraint, and I'm excited because you know why? You know, why the world is saying there's constraint, there's losses? The Bible says when people say there's a casting down, we will say there's a lifting up. David says, since I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither have I seen his seed begging bread. I feel like prophesying at the start of the service today, that in the name of Jesus Christ, you will not beg to pay school fares. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not beg to pay house rent. I pray that the capital, you need to start that business, to expand the business, that the God of heaven that does the miraculous, the God of heaven that sits upon the circles of the earth, will cause the resources to come and flow unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, you know I'm saying this to you because you just need to remember that you, like, like I said last week, you live a sponsored life. If you're unable to watch today, last week's message, go back to it again you live a sponsored life only a terrible manufacturer will make a product and not support that product god cannot make you on earth and not think of supporting you there's no need that you have that god has not planned ahead of time for your life is a sponsored one your life is a planned out life for you know god has just great thoughts for you he said the thoughts i have towards you are thoughts of peace thoughts of evil to bring you to an expected end they thought they fired you from a job. You thought you lost all the money. God says, what the enemy thought, thought for evil have turned around for good. That's what the Bible says. And in this season, I'm saying to you, if you let your hope and faith be really stirred up, you will see the hand, you will see the faithfulness, you will see the grace of God in a very significant way in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And this morning, I want to talk to you, it's evening anywhere you are. But today, I want to talk to you about Getting clear direction for your economic goals. Getting clear directions for your economic goals. You know, someone says, what are you talking about? Why in a season why people are trying to make strategic decisions, people are making decisions, should I expand this business or should I just stay right now? Should I hold on to cash or should I just, you know, put money and invest in some, in some real estate? People are making decisions, should I, should I expand this opportunity or I should maintain at this point? People are wondering, what is it going to be next? So people are making very strategic decisions. People are saying that, should we lay down staff or we can believe that this will be a cycle will pass over some people are thinking about the way the finance of the family have gone how do we make a strategic decision that will keep us ahead during the bend and i'm saying this that you can actually get very clear this direction from God about your financial goals, about your business goal, about your economic goal. You know why? Because God knows the future and can just speak wisdom into your spirit. Let's start by reading Genesis chapter 49 in verse 1. The Bible says, And Jacob called unto his sons and, got, and said, Gather yourself together that I may tell you that which are before you in the last days. He said, I want to tell you prophetically what will happen in the future. You know, you know I'm so excited about this thing because our God has the power to speak into now that which can affect the future. And we have that gift of prophecy. We don't have to wait for tomorrow. We can tell tomorrow what we want it to be. That's really powerful. You know, in this season, thank God in the month of September, research is starting. Only that this year research is different. It's research double. It's research double. Double research. What does that mean? God has been standing in my heart that in this season, there has been a lot of information about losses, debt, you know, you know, breaking down and all of those things. And God is saying to us, what is saying to us as a church? He's saying that instead of putting your eyes on all those things the world is saying, why not put your eyes on what I see? What does God want to see? Recovery, things doubling up. So we're going to focus during the time of research on what we call double. We are not shrinking back on our goals. We are not shrinking back on the opportunities. We are believing that it will double. We are believing that everything you've lost in 2020, there will be a double. There will, it will double up in accumulation for you. If you believe, say amen. Glory to God. So verse 2 says, says, So Jacob said, Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Then he says something powerful. He said, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Now verse 4 is where I'm going to. He says, 
unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. What does that mean? Listen to me. One major thing about success and one major indicator of all success is the clarity of direction. Look at an example. Let's take, a, let's take an example that we are familiar with. I'm mean, like Steve Jobs. When Steve Jobs took over Apple, you know what the first thing Steve Jobs did? Steve Jobs went into that meeting. Apple was beginning to struggle from a place of profitability. And he just said, you know what? I think that we've lost what we need to be doing right now. He said, we need to stream down. And some of them like, how do you stream down when you're losing money? He said, sometimes you need to do less to do more. And that's the word of God to some of you today. The reason why you are really ineffective is this. You are doing too many things. Sometimes it is, it's better to have three goals and achieve three goals than to have 15 goals and achieve one or no goal at all. So, but how do you start this? This starts with a journey of direction. Now, direction, so, so if you notice, direction is very powerful. So Steve Jobs went and shrunk down the company in terms of product, streamlined, got the vision back. And in a short time, Apple that was on the edge of just a financial meltdown moved into huge profitability. It grew by over 6,000%. You wouldn't believe. That is really awesome. That is really, really awesome. And the reason I'm saying so to you is this. Because for you to move to the next level, direction is important. You're thinking about what your company is doing. Direction is important for your company. You're thinking about the decision to make about investment, about forex decision. It's very important what is happening there. So then, one of the major indicators of all time for success is clarity of direction. See, a lack of clarity is confusing and opens the door to devils and self-destruction. And maybe you are in a place right now and you're thinking, okay, I'm planning my finances, but what am I going to do right now? Should we shrink this product or expand this service? Maybe you're thinking, okay, the forex seems to be changing. That seems to be some kind of inflation. And you need some kind of direction. Some of you are really thinking, how can I get ahead of other people? How can I just be at a place of advantage? If that's what you're thinking, this message is for you. Because at the end of this message, you will be able to see how to actually position yourself for the victory that God has planned for you, for the success that God has planned for you. But the first thing we need to start from is a place of direction. A lack of direction is always frustrating. And listen to me. Success takes consistent and resilience. And without clear direction, you cannot, have, you cannot be consistent and resilient. The reason why is this. When you don't have clear direction, you keep moving from pillar to post. Have you not seen people this year, they are into this business. And next year, they are into this business. And the other year, they are into this business. And that's really very confusing. Because if you're going to succeed at anything, it's going to take you a lot of consistency and a lot of resilience. But that is impossible, that direction. Look at what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. The Bible says, The labor of the foolish of the foolish wearied every one of them because they do not know how to go into the city. He said, those people have a desire, but what they do not have is direction. Now, let me shock you. As we talk about finances today, you know what I discovered? In the whole of the New Testament, there was never a time that people had need financially and their response was prayer. <laughs> I was shocked when I saw that in the Bible. Jesus had needs in his ministry. His response was not prayer. Why wasn't the response of Jesus Christ not prayer? The reason why is that once you have wisdom and direction for something, you know what to do so you don't have to pray about it. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in John chapter 6, where they were lacking bread, the Bible says Jesus Christ asked Philip, he said, where can we get bread to eat? And what did, you, what did Philip say? Philip said, was giving answers. And the Bible says, this, and he said this to prove him because he himself knew what he would do. The secret of provision in the kingdom is attached to clarity of direction. They came to meet him and said, sorry, sir. Um, they asked Peter, 
They said, where will your servant, and where would Jesus Christ, wouldn't Jesus pay taxes? And Jesus said to them, before Peter even asked him, he said, go and fish. The first fish you open his mouth, there's money inside. Because he just had clarity of direction. They asked him, where shall I bear the Passover? He said, go down a certain way. Sometimes, you know, we pray too much instead of seeking for direction. It's amazing. And, and like I said, just read through the New Testament. They, you hardly find a need in the Bible and the apostles or Jesus begin to gather, say, Lord, give us, give us a miracle. No, what they seem to understand is this, how can we pull out direction from the inside of us and bring direction into a physical place? And that's what I'm saying. Because some of you have really been praying about certain changes in your life and God wants to lead you by your spirit on the inner man. Glory to God. I said this to you and I'm going to back up again. I said, the Bible is full of financial miracles and miracles of provision. But nobody ever became wealthy through miracles of provision. The people that became wealthy developed systems that actually, that God blessed and that produces wealth. You know why? Just to help you understand. The reason I'm saying so is this. Because from a traditional Pentecostal thinking, we are thought to think of God's blessing as someone writing a check to us for a million naira or a million dollars. We have not thought to think that the way God will bless us in a consistent manner is that the blessing of God will be piped through a business. The blessing of God will be piped through the works of our hand. It's not going to be an epileptic, someone gave me $10,000 over there, someone gave me $4,000 over there. You know what that does to us? Even when we are praying, our expectation is different in the way God wants to answer prayers. So when you are praying that God increase me, God bless me. Most people in the image of their mind, when they say God bless me, they are hoping that someone will just come and write a check for 2.5 million. But on the deep side, what does God want to do? God wants to move from writing you a check or giving just some cash to you building a system of wealth. And I'm saying so because this is the way you need to start thinking. If my finance is going to increase, I'm going to increase the channel in which the blessing and the grace of God will flow. I'm going to increase my capacity to add wealth. If my finance will increase, my capacity to add value must be multiplied. That's the way you need to be thinking. That's the way you need to be thinking. That's the way you need to be thinking. Glory to God. So let's talk about this. What are the four barriers? What are some barriers rather? To increase and clarity. So we've learned something that clarity. So people are saying, Lord, I want clarity. What are the, what, what are the barriers to clarity? Number one is fear. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. Verse 25. We read a lot of this last week. The Bible says this, verse 24. And when he had received the one talent came, the Lord and said, Lord, I knew that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and guarding where you have not strawed. Verse 25. He said, and I was what? And I was afraid. The first thing that is a barrier to increase and clarity is fear. Listen, every other person, the one that I said, the five talents, the one that received the two talent, the one that received the one talent, all of them received talent. But the one that received five talent did something different with his own talent. The one that received two talent did something different with his own talent. The one that received one talent, you know what he did? He took the talent and hid it. Why did he hide it? Just one reason. The Bible says he said he was afraid. What was he afraid of? You may think, why was he afraid? He was afraid that it's better to hide this talent than to do something with this talent and lose the talent. You know what I'm saying? So, once you have a fear into you, it's going to distort clarity about financial direction. The reason why many people are not able to start in a business, you know, some people think they have a procrastination problem. It's not really a procrastination problem. It's a fear problem. Because they keep postponing because they are really deep down afraid. That's what it is. So, why have you not started the business? You say you start the business in 2018. You say you start in 2019. You say you start in 2020. Why are you not being able... 
able to start because you're afraid. The Bible says she took the one talent. And listen, it makes sense. If I'm afraid I'm going to lose the money, why don't I hide the money? Why don't I keep the money? But listen to me. Whatever you try to keep in order not to lose, you eventually lose. I'm saying so because many people have been stuck because of this fear. They have so much dreams. They have so much ideas. They have so much concept. And the reason why they cannot move to the next level is this. Their ideas, for it to come to pass, they must take a, they must take a decision. They must invest some kind of money. They must do something strategic. They must step out of their comfort zone. But their fear will not allow them. Their fear will not allow them. Their fear will hold them back. There are people listening to me right now. There are opportunities outside your comfort zone. But your fear is holding you back. You are just afraid. And let me say something to you. One of the reasons why you're afraid is this. Because in your mind, you think that fear is and failure is fatal. It means if I lose something, that's the end. The reason why I don't fear is this. There's nothing I lose that God cannot give me back. And failure to me is not fatal. Failure is a lesson. God is trying to teach me something I'm not learning. Listen to me. Sometimes you must realize the best way to learn is to fail. I'm telling you, the best way to learn is to fail. How do you know you should, you should not date certain kind of men? By dating some kind of men. How do you know you should not date certain kind of women? By dating certain kind of women. How do you know what business is right or wrong? By getting involved. I'm, I'm saying so today. Many of you, you, you there are investments, you have lost opportunity. You look back and you say, oh, and I should have bought that, I should have bought that thing. I should have done that deal. But the reason why you always have the regret is this, because you never took one step. I would rather deal with doing something and failing than what? Than having regret of never doing it at all. How many of you ought to have started some kind of side hustle? That you, you've written down two years ago, three years ago, and you're still there. You've not started it. How many of you have to take one step? Your, your business have grown and you are now operating at 100 million. And at 100 million, it's a shift place for you because it's okay. But there is another dimension from 100 to 350 million. And it's a huge step for you. But you are really afraid because you feel if you take that step, Things can go wrong and you have that fear you are nursing. There are many of you that you can put your money in a certain investment and the investment can yield for you but you are afraid. I'm only saying something to you. Number one, fear. Fear is going to kill potential. There are so, there's so much on what you can do. There are people listening to me right now. You can sing. There are people listening to me right now. You have potentials that are global. You have things that can translate into huge financial opportunity but you keep underestimating yourself because you are really afraid you cannot compete you tell yourself what do I know who knows me if things go bad what will be there for me and you fill your mind with all this kind of fear you even have fear that I'm a woman which woman does things you need to think of a woman called Deborah Deborah was a woman but full of faith there's another woman called Ruth Ruth was a woman but full of faith these women did significant things because their faith was leaping their faith was productive Fear kills potentials. Fear, fear paralyzes initiative. You, you, know, you, you, know the, you, you know the dangerous thing about fear? It's very dangerous when it comes to fear. Just that even the initiatives you have, fear begins without anybody talking to you, just by yourself. You have a conversation with yourself and fear tells you, you cannot go that far. It hurts when you are by yourself and your fear without any external influence begins to torment you. You pull out your phone and look at your dreams for 2020 and nobody is there to talk to you and your fear says, stop mocking yourself. You know you're not this good. Your fear tells you you're not this intelligent. Nobody will buy things from you. You can go that far. You can be a millionaire. You can get the job. And your fear begins to terrorize you. And, and, and by yourself, without talking to any other person, you conclude in yourself, I wouldn't do this because I know I failed. How can you fail in what you have not started? That's what sounds like faith. Because faith says it has not happened, but it has happened. Fear says it has not happened, but it has happened. The difference is this. Why faith is in the positive. Fear is in the negative. 
negative. The reason why you are afraid to invest is not because you are careful. It's because you are fearful you'll lose the money. And the way to break your face to step out and do it. I know that Peter sank in water. But to today, Peter is the only one we know that walked on water. Listen to me. Sometimes to walk on water, you have to sink in water. And there's no big deal about sinking in water. You just must get up again. So say, oh, I lost money in business. And so what? Get up again. He said, it was a lot of money. Listen to me. Don't you understand? Whatever came out of you showed that you're past it. Oh my God. That means if you lost 10 million, it came out of you. It means you can refute 10 million again. The problem is not that you lost something. The problem is that you stopped trying something. The problem is not that you lost something. The problem is that you stopped trying something. This woman had one talent and she said, she said, I'm sorry. He said, he said, I wanted to invest it, but I was afraid. And, and guess what? The master did not understand that. The master did not say, oh, that, that's wise of you. Because when it comes to God and prosperity, fear is not an instrument of negotiation. Fear is not a currency in our kingdom. Fear has no place in our kingdom. The master said, look at you. You are wicked and selfish. It's time to break, break away from your fear. Listen to me. You have to go to your bank account. Some of you, the, the reason why you have never got, some of you owe money. You don't even pick up the calls of the people you owe because you are so afraid. Pick up their call and say, I'm coming in for a meeting because I believe I can pay you back. And let's start negotiating something. I'm telling you, that's the way you do it. Don't look down on yourself. Most of you are, most of you because your parents struggled. Because your parents went from great to grass. You are so afraid that the same thing will happen to you. The past does not have to show up in your future. The Bible says affliction will not arise a second time. It happened to them, it will not happen to you. Moreover, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Your genealogy has changed. The one that was connected to the old family died in Christ. Oh, glory to God. You are a brand new man in Christ. Christ. who are you he says whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith you know what that means there's nothing I do that does not prosper hallelujah hey there's nothing I do that does not prosper m maybe I should give you some scriptures that can help you step your faith today because what I see hold people down the most is their fear so when it comes to direction, their fear begins to interrupt with that direction. They cannot receive clear direction because their fear keeps on... Let, let me explain to you. Oh, Lord. Did you notice in the Bible that the voice came from heaven and said to, about Jesus Christ, it's, the voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The Bible says some people heard that voice. Others says it thundered. Question. It's not because the voice thundered. There's something inside them that makes them interpret the clear voice of God as thundering. What am I saying to you? Once your heart is full of fear, fear will make you misinterpret divine signals. You will not see it. That's the same way Balak and Balaam, as the prophet was going, an angel was there with a drawn sword. The animal saw the angel and threw off the prophet. And you know what the animal said? The animal said to the prophet, Donkey said, can't you see? But because the prophet's heart was filled with greed, he could not understand signals again. Once your heart is filled with fear, when God is trying to speak to you about your finance and about your economy, you will not receive it again because the heart has been saturated with fear you will begin to hear things that will align with your fear perspective. Fear paralysis initiator. What does fear also do? Fear limits your option. Fear says, this is how far you can go. You know, some of you really, in your mind, your mind has drawn lines for you. Lines have been drawn for you. And say, you know what? You can do so well, but not beyond this line. Your company can do so well, not beyond this line. You can have so much money, but not beyond this line. I, I want to get up on your feet right now. And look, any line you know they've drawn for you, any line that you know is on your mind, I say, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cross the line. I'm a line crosser. By the power in, in your homes, whatever you're watching from, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm a line crosser. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm a line crosser. Listen to me. Nobody had ever been a successful 
person or official in another land before Joseph got there. But when Joseph got there, everything changed for Joseph. The Bible said that Pharaoh said to Joseph, there shall be none superior to the king to you than me. And even me, I will be superior to you just in the throne. Listen to me. The fact that it has not happened for any other person does not mean it cannot start from you. Before the story of Abraham and Sarah, no old woman had ever had a child. But it started with Abraham and Sarah. There are certain things that never happened in your family. There are certain things that never happened in your country. But I speak as a prophet of God. It's going to start from your head. That testimony money will start from your head through your lineage success will be coming to your family in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth glory to God what in, what, what reduces people's capacity to have. so so let me tell you something if you're in a place of fear that you have to get the fear out because fear will interrupt the direction the second reason why the second barrier to increase and clarity is this dependence 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 do you notice the elder brother, the elder brother of the prodigal brother? Do you notice that as soon as the prodigal brother came back, he says, hey, I've served you all my life. What have I gotten from it? He was so dependent on the father. The father said, he said, you've not given me anything. The father said, I have to give you something. Don't you realize that what, what there is is all yours? Listen to me. One of the dangers of growing up in a developing country is this. There is a tendency to develop on other people or other nations to solve your problems. And that's why you see there's so much entitlement. Because you just think that someone is meant to help you. Listen to me. If your life is going to go forward, you must understand something. You have to be in control of your life. The easiest way to lose control of your goals and of your life is by becoming very and over put dependent what something is i'm looking for someone to help me and i'm looking for someone to help me listen to me if you're going to go forward in life the support system that's held you back you have to break it loose many of you are saying that well you know there are many married couples that you know that their parents kind of control their homes and let me tell you something not all is situation but most of the situation where the parents control their home watch that family their parents are funding the home i'm telling you you know why because whoever you fund you can control if you want to break out of control, you must be able to detach yourself from financial clutches. You must be able to detach yourself. When you see a relationship where they get a lot of demand but stays in it, watch it, there's money involved. I'm telling you, there's money involved. You say, I don't love him, but you know, it's okay. What him is okay. There's money involved. And what you have to do is this. Listen to me. And that's why people, watch this now. That's why people cannot get clarity. Because there's an uncle they're depending on. There's a financial structure they're depending on. What did, what, what did Jesus Christ tell the man at the pool of Bethesda? He said, take up your bed and walk. What does that mean? He says, the thing that's carried you for such a long time. This thinking pattern, this support system that's been supporting you for all these years. He said, detach yourself from it. Carry up yourself and walk. If you're going to succeed in life, you must understand that why men are very important in my life, that God is my source and every man is a channel. And I look up to God. I have no allegiance to any man. That is God that is my source. You know why? When people are very stuck on dependence, what begins to happen to them is this. They cannot see life for themselves. They see the life through the lens. See, so you know why? Because when you have dependence thinking, every direction or policy or guidance you get, he's subjected to someone's approval because they understand that and their approval becomes a method of warfare in their hands. I'm telling you. And if you're not careful, you yourself get to a place where you become entitled because that's, that's how they raise you. You say, they didn't do this and this and for me. We're, we're, there's no free lunch in life. Oh. Nobody owes you anything. Whatever you be, you become. And that's what the Bible says, you know me. It said, choose you this day, will you, sir? Glory to God. I said, glory to God. So how does God bless? How does, so as we think about direction, four critical areas that God, these are the channels in which God uses to bless us. And these are also the areas you need direction from. The first thing is this, how does God bless his people? Number one, it blesses you through the works of your hands. God blesses his people through the work of your hand. And that's why, when we're talking about the blessing of God, you cannot remove the blessing of God from hard work. I'm telling you to me, more blessing means more work. 
this kind of you know, theological teaching that goes around and says that you don't have to work hard, God will bless you, just pray. Listen, those things are not biblically possible. When you read the scripture, you understand that the people that walked in the mighty blessing of prosperity, their work, they became extremely, extremely busy. So what do you need to do? So if the work of my hand, what's the work of your, your day job, what you do? If the work of your hand is how God blesses you. So when in Luke chapter 5, when Jesus was going to bless Peter, it was in that same fishing business that the miracle happened. So how does God bless you? God bless you that day job. So if you are not putting in your best in that place, when the blessing of God comes, there's really nothing to bless. That's why the Bible says the hand of the rich are made rich. Let me tell you something. The culture of hard work cannot be eroded under any disguise of teaching of prosperity. For prosperity to be true and complete, there must be hard work. You must go to work, work hard, and not just work in fiscal work. In a mental way, produce superior value that other people can see. The Bible says that God will bless the works of your hand. That's what it's like telling you. So the first way that God blesses people is through the work of their hands. The second way that God blesses people is this, through people. God blesses people through people. <laughs> God blesses people through people. God blesses people through people. God blesses people through people. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2. See what the Bible says. He says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some entertained angels unaware. Let me tell you something. When God wants to bless you, He will bring some people to you. They may not look like people that are significant. They may not look like people that are important. But those people are angelic in nature. Some of them can be literal angels from God. Or some of them are what I call servants. You touch them in such a way that they cannot pay you back, but there's someone in their network that they will talk to about what you have done that will pay you back. Those people are angels. He says, be careful not to forget. That's what he says. He says, be, do not forget to entertain strangers. The reason why is this. There are certain levels of blessing that will happen in your life that God will require people to help you. Look at the issue of them, Daniel. When there was a change of a kingdom and a new king came into babylon you know what thing that happened daniel was not was no longer relevant all of a sudden the king's mother called the king and said these issues you have there's a man in this kingdom that served the diff, you know the different dispensation his name is daniel the question is that how did the king's mother know daniel my belief is that daniel was very kind when he was in office to the people that he knew and the people he didn't knew. So his news was spreading abroad. And because of that, Daniel was brought back again. Many of you are serving the position and you can use your position to do so many good. But you just become so difficult. You become so high-handed. Let me tell you something. Just remember that God gave it grace to the humble and he resisted the proud. Through your position, raise up other people. Through your position, be a blessing to other people. Why? Because the people you're a blessing to today, they might not be the same people, but God will use people to bless you again. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 11. See what the Bible says. He says, I am the Lord calling a ravenous bread from the east. And guess the next line. He said, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. God says, when I want to do something, I will raise up a man that will execute my counsel. So many of you are not good with people. You have to go and intentionally have social skills, people skill. The reason why is this. Once you don't know how to handle people, you don't know how to handle your blessings. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 26. The Bible says, and Saul went home when he was made the king. The Bible says, and a bond of men whose God had touched their hearts. You know why? God uses people to lift people. I know you want to be lifted. I know that people are God's channels for blessing you. But the question is this, who are you lifting today? That's what the Bible says in Matthew 5. He said, blessed are the merciful. This is, let me tell you something. This is how you receive the mercy of God about your finances. You will intentionally show mercy. He said, blessed are those that are merciful, for they shall also obtain mercy. 
You go out of your way where it's not what you do and show mercy. And you are showing mercy not because you like it or it's easy. But from a place of covenant revelation. I'm telling you because this week, this month, there will be opportunities to show mercy. And as you step out of your convenience and you show mercy, he said, blessed are those that show mercy for they shall obtain mercy. He didn't say they will pray for mercy. He said because of the mercy they've shown, they will obtain mercy. That's why Proverbs says this, that he that lends unto the poor obtained favor from the Lord. Once you are able to clothe people that cannot help them say, he said heaven will take his blanket and cover around you i'm telling you there are businesses that should fold up if not for the mercy that the owner has shown i'm telling you i know of people that i know of a man he told me he said i don't pray a lot he said but my life is very easy i said why he said because my mother my mother is merciful and prayerful he said i know i'm eating of the generosity of my of my parents there's a way, I'm telling you, generosity and mercy is so powerful that you don't only eat all the fruits, even those that come after you eat all the fruits. Glory to God. I said by saying something, that if you're going to receive clear direction, you must do what? You must not have fear. Let me just help you as I close today about some things you have to do not to have fear. Listen to me. Fear is an acquired taste. We, we grew with fear. But we can remove fear. How do you remove fear? You remove fear by going into the word of God and by letting the word of God come into you. How did fear come in? Fear came in through what we saw, through what we heard, through what we felt, through what we tasted. How do you let faith come in? Through what we heard, through what we saw, through what we tasted. See what the Bible says. I'm going to give some scripture you can use. The Bible says in Psalm 128 verse 2, he says, you will enjoy the fruit of your labor. He says, how joyful and how fruitful you be. Your wife will make you, will be like a fruitful vine, flourishing within your homes. Your children will be like, like vicious young olive tree as they sit around your table. Just imagine that. He says that you will be, you will enjoy the fruits of your labor. That's the promise of God. You will take this kind of promise to God in prayer and begin to meditate and say, yes, this company I've started, I will enjoy the fruit of my labor. I will not cry one day and put my hands over my head. He says, I will enjoy the fruit of my labor. Zechariah chapter 9 verse, verse 12. What does he say? He said, come back. He says this, turn to your strongholds. Yeah, oh my God, this is very powerful. I wish you can get someone to write this down. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. He said, talk to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, do I declare? He says, I will render double to you. God is saying concerning you. These are the scriptures you read. I don't know if you know this, that in the Bible, there are 365 verses that says fear not. And the reason why is that for every day there is a fear, there is a scripture that says fear not. So as you receive the scripture, you begin to build something in your spirit. Look at 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. These are the scriptures that helps you not to fear financially. He says this, and God is able. These are scriptures that has to do with your prosperity. He says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every walk. Did you hear that? Hey, did you hear that? He said, God is able to make not some grace. He said, all grace, wherever the grace is, in heaven and on earth. He said, you will take all the grace and direct it towards you. Why? He said that you have all sufficiency in all things. Hallelujah. All grace is abounding towards me. This is why you cannot afford to fear. This is why you can walk free of fear. All grace is abounding towards me. I have in all sufficiency, in all things. I'm able to do every good work. I'm able to sponsor the gospel. I'm able to help the poor. I'm able to help my parents. I'm able to help my siblings. I'm able to help my country. Why? All grace abounds towards me. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Ah, hey, hey. See what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 25. He says, He that is of a proud heart, still of fear. But he that put it, he that put it his trust in the Lord shall be made rich. Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. NLT says, Greed causes fighting, 
but trusting God leads to prosperity. As I trust God, I walk in prosperity. As I trust God, I walk in prosperity. Th- these are your confessions. You see, you are hearing too much negative things. Hear new things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, se- <laughs> Hallelujah. see Nehemiah 2 verse 20. See what it says in Nehemiah 2 verse 20. It says this. Glory to God. Aha. It says, Then I answered and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. And he said, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Hallelujah. People are asking you, how will you survive in this heaven, in this season? Nehemiah 2.20, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. How will your company make it? The God of heaven will prosper us. You need five billion and to make that thing happen. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. You need the president's help. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. If you believe, say amen. Oh, glory to God. Let's go back. Ah, <laughs> oh. Ah, I love this Psalm 128. <laughs> oh my God. Psalm 128, verse 2. Oh, glory to God. The God of heaven will prosper us. God is able to make. See, I'm giving you weapons for I'm giving you words for meditations. I'm putting prophecy in your mouth. I'm putting prophecy in your mouth. Oh, glory to God. I'm putting prophecy in your mouth. That's what I'm doing right now. Psalm 128, verse 2. Mm. I'm putting prophecy in your mouth. How will it happen? The God of heaven will prosper us. How will it be the house? The God of heaven will prosper us. Can you afford the house in, in Manhattan? The God of heaven will prosper us. They say you're a stranger in this country. The God of heaven will prosper us. Hey, how do I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? He said the God of heaven will prosper us. Who is this God? The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. The God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were not nobodies. Jacob was to be cheated. But God raised him up. Who is this God? He's the one that raised up the poor from the dunghill and set him among the priests to stay. Oh, look at it. Psalm 128 verse 2. For thou shalt, oh, this is very powerful. Anyway, you are standing to your feet. He said, for thou shalt eat of the labor of thy hands. Happy shall thou be. It shall be well with you. Your wife shall be a fruitful vine by the side of the house. Your children shall be like holy plants around the table. He says, behold, so shall they say, so shall be blessed. The man that feared the Lord, thou shalt, the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. And thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. And yes, thy children's children and peace upon Israel. Rotabasata. Lift up your hands and thank him everyone. That's the word of God for you. See, take every scripture, one for each week. Watch for each day of the week. Oh, declare it. Declare it. That the Lord will prosper us. And Father, we receive your word today. That you will prosper us. That we will eat of the fruit of our labor. Great to be our peace. He will bless us out of Zion. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I'm always still praying. If you're not born again, I want to pray with you. Will you say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I've heard the word today. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and was raised from the death of my justification. I receive eternal life today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you said that prayer, send me a message. I'll also pray with you also. And let me tell you something. The best is ahead of you right now. Everything is speaking up for you. All those scriptures I read towards the end of the message, get each one. One for Monday, for Tuesday, for Wednesday, for Thursday. Meditate upon them. Let the power come. How do you get direction? By meditating in the word of God. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Remember to join me in prayers. I pray every Monday to Friday, 6 8 on Instagram. Tomorrow, I want to ask you, join me and God bless you. Amen.